party. This is the longest sentence I've ever written. <laughs> the point of the party is having gone to the party. The reward is going to dinner afterward, the two of them, and then home again. Particulars vary. Tonight, there is Elena Petrovka, their hostess. Her husband is always away somewhere, probably best not to ask what he's doing. Smart and noisy and defiantly vulgar. An ongoing debate between Peter and Rebecca. Does she know about the jewelry and the lipstick and the glasses? Is she making a statement? How could she be this rich and intelligent and not know? There is the small, very good Archvager and the large, pretty good Martin and the Gober sink into which some guest never identified once empty an ashtray. There is Jack Johnson seated in waxy majesty on a love seat behind, beside Linda Nielsen, who speaks animatedly into the Arctic topography of Jack's face. There is the first drink, vodka on the rocks. Elena serves a famously obscure brand of vodka. She has chip, shipped in from Moscow. Billy, can Peter or anyone tell the difference? Followed by the second drink, but not a third. There is the insistent glittery buzz of the party of enormous wealth, always a little intoxicating, no matter how familiar it becomes. There's the quick check on Rebecca. She's fine. She's talking to Mona and Amy. Thank God for a wife who can manage on her own at these things. There's the inevitable conversation with Betty Rice. Oh, sorry, I had to miss the opening here. The Inskis are fantastic. He'll come by this week. And with Doug Petrie, lunch will be from Monday. Absolutely. And with the other Linda Nielsen, yeah, sure, I'll come talk to your students. Call me at the gallery and we'll figure out a date. There's peeing under a Kelly drawing, newly hung in the powder room. Now, Elena can't know, can she? If she'd hang this in a bathroom, she's got to be serious about her eyeglasses, too. There's the decision to have that third vodka after all. There's a flirtation with Elena. Hey, I love the vodka. Yeah, Angel, you know you can get it here anytime you like. He knows. He is known and probably scorned for working it, the whole, hey, I'd do you if I had the chance thing. There was a scrawny, hysterical Mike Forth standing with Emma near the standing with Emmett near the Terrence Cove, getting drunk enough to start homing in on Rebecca. Peter sympathizes with Mike. Can't help it. He's been there. Thirty years later, he's still amazed that Joanna Hurst did not love him, not even a little. There is a glimpse of the improbably handsome hired waiter talking surreptitiously on his cell in the kitchen. You know, girlfriend, boyfriend, sex for hire. At least the kids who serve at these things have a little mystery about them. Then back to the living room, living room where, oops, Mike has managed to corner Rebecca after all. He's talking furiously to her, and she's nodding, searching for the rescue Peter promised her. There's Peter's quick check to make sure no one has been ignored. There's the goodbye conversation with Elena, who's sorry she missed seeing the Vincents. Call me, there are a few other things I'd love to show you. There's the strangely ardent goodbye from Betty Rice, something's up. The claiming of Rebecca, ah, sorry, I gotta take her away now, see you soon, I hope. The panicky party grin from Mike, and goodbye, goodbye, thank you, see you next week. Yeah, absolutely. Call me, goodbye.